Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike. Thanks for taking a minute of your day to spend it with me today. And we are continuing to go back into the 90s and watch the movies that were influenced by Scream. There's a shocking amount of them I have not seen, which is weird, but one of them is The Curve. We just did Cherry Falls a couple weeks ago. Check that out. Put that at the end of this video. But The Curve, Dead Man's Curve, it was titled Dead Man's Curve before, but that same year, Dead Man on Campus, which actually ties into the same story about the urban myth that if your roommate commits suicide while you're in college, you get a 4.0 for the rest of the semester. Both movies are kind of about the same thing, so I, you, it's understandable why they changed the name, but now that both names are out there, it just makes the whole thing confusing even to this day. If you look it up on IMDb, you gotta look it up under Dead Man's Curve, but if you wanna rent it or buy it on Voodoo, you gotta look it up under The Curve. And it's also a cologne, so that's a little tiny microcosm of why this movie is not more successful, but this movie sits with a zero percent. A fucking zero! Not a fucking ten! A fucking zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and I think after watching it for the first time, I fell in love with this movie. I think that this may be the greatest zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes of all time. And I'd love to know if you guys know any 0% that you think are better. Please comment them down below because that's a fascinating idea to me. That a movie that I can enjoy this much is actually sitting at a 0%. Now there's only like 8 reviews or something like that on there. Again, it's a movie that just kind of went away like a soft fart in the night. You know, one of those ones that didn't smell nor make a sound. That's kind of what happened in this movie and I don't know why because it is so good if you love Scream movie vibes. It falls apart, but we'll get to why. First off, number one thing, if you're a Stu fan, if you're a fan of Stu, this is like unearthing a surprise Scream sequel focused on Stu Nugget from the bottom of the weird flea market in Texas. You dust it off and you go, huh, what's this piece of shit? And then you put it in your VCR and you are blown away. It is, it is a lost piece of movie history for Stu fans because Matthew Lillard plays a character named Tim in this. Natalie's dead. Well, that's clearly unfortunate. Think you can solve the mystery? What happened that night at the town? What did you do with Rand's body? You don't have to answer them, buddy. Spot the lies. Absolutely not a knock on Matthew Lillard's acting because this is exactly what they wanted him for. You get the idea. That's what they wanted in this film. And the character just works. But he is Stu in this movie. This is fucking Stu a thousand percent across the board. It's just, it's just like watching the same exact character, down from the way he dresses to the way he acts. If, if Stu was, if you knew he was the killer the whole time and he was just a really manipulating dick, then you can understand how this could literally be Stu. Besides, it takes a man to do something like that. And he's the focus of the movie. So the whole idea of the movie is, and it starts out with these amazing camera shots that just like zoom slowly in and out. The direction's great. It's directed by Dan Rosen, who unfortunately only did one movie after this, which is disappointing because the direction itself was something I loved from the camera work all the way down to just the weird feel of the movie. It had the 90s teen angst, darkness down. There was just something weird about high schoolers and college kids back in this time that there was like a darkness to us. Teen angst meant something completely different and that's part of the reason why movies like, like Scream and stuff did so well. There's a movie called Super Dark Times that came out a few years ago that you could probably find on Netflix or somewhere that kind of captures that strange murder vibe that was like the 90s and early 2000s if you were in middle school or high school around those times. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. It focuses on this small group of students who really want to go to grad school at Harvard. There's Matthew Lillard's character, Tim, who's kind of the Stu character of the group. There is uh, Michael Vartan's character, Chris, who's like the straight lay, super serious one who really just like has to get into college so badly that he can't even get it up because he's always thinking about Harvard. There's his girlfriend played by Carrie Russell, Emma, who looks just like Dizzy from Starship Troopers in this movie. It's weird. And they all hang out next to this, this gigantic cliff where kids, you know, smoke weed and drink beer and and talk about things like getting into harvard or maybe killing your roommate and the movie opens up with that whole idea it's this bit from a comedian that you can hear playing and it's like did you know that if your roommate commits suicide you get a 4.0 for the rest of the semester 
And that kind of informs everything that's going on. And the movie doesn't exactly like lay it out and tell you what's going on. You just see Matthew Lillard and Michael Vartan walking through a store, picking up like cure CDs and shit like that and picking up all this stuff and talking about their plans and how they're going to do it. And then you hear a character talking to his therapist who weirdly the entire movie is just the strangest character of the movie. As she comes and goes throughout the plot, she's just in very uncomfortable moments, like talking about suicide or talking about the death of someone. She's just like sucking on a Twizzler and looking at people weird. I don't get it. You'll notice that with several characters in this, they all, even the tiny characters have their strange personality quirks. Like the detective played by the great Bo Deedle is just like, constantly smoking this cigar and like screaming at people. It's like, you fucking smart ass college kids. Some characters are really over the top. There's a security guard that will remind you of your bang guy from fucking Jason lives of all things. He comes into these kids and they're all like smoking weed and, and, and hang out. And he's like, all right, now let me read you this. I am a security guard that in no means can halt your progress, lay fingers on you or otherwise detain you. Basically this just means I'm a cop and he carries nunchucks really over the top, strange character for the movie. It all has this, tinge of awfulness underneath it and it's in the characters and the way that they present themselves to each other mainly Stu's character he's so twisted and mean in this movie the things that he does whether it's telling a, a, a friend that to get his girlfriend back he has to go and get his house and fill it full of flowers and rose petals and lights and candles and all that stuff hitting on his girlfriend bringing her back telling her he did it and having her give him head while he's waiting to pop out for her in the closet and then just staring at him while it's happening. Those are the kind of fucked up things that that Tim, I keep wanting to call him Stu because he's so goddamn Stu, does. And throughout the film, there's detectives trying to figure out what's going on. There's, there's other things happening. There's them trying to get away with this whole murder. And it just kind of floats in the sea of these things happening. It's, it's not like a direct plot in a sense. And then at the end, everything comes to light and there's... It all kind of falls apart in the end, de definitely. The, with the twist, it was pretty predictable, and then they do another twist, and then it's just like kind of, they, it's just like, it's kind of like an M. Night Shyamalan movie with a bad twist in a way. But it's not horrible. It's not like it was all a dream or any bullshit like that. They do a twist that happens. It's just kind of, well, that didn't really work. But the whole vibe of the movie is a total win for fans of Scream, for fans of 90s, like teen young adult horror if you can even put it that way it's just a fucking banger of a movie when it comes to that stuff as a movie overall it's not perfect by any means no but this got this just vibe to it i don't know how else to explain it this nails that vibe and they know exactly how to use matthew lillard they set him up in so many ways with so many great monologues throughout the film whether he's being funny whether he's being a huge dick whether he's being twisted and like holding a gun to his head and cry and scream crying he is so fucked up that this is one of his best performances there's no doubt about it he is all over the place in this movie and they really let him shine there's there's one point where he tells this fucked up story about his friend uh, right in front of his girlfriend who just lost him and is sitting there crying and he tells this really long Quentin Tarantino-esque monologue about I, I'll, I'll leave it for the movie but it involves this hooker and the way he's talking about it, he's like there's this fat toothless whore and she's standing there taking the picture of the girls crying and he just keeps going as he's speaking slowly the camera gets closer to his face and the music just quaintly fades away and the background goes dark and then it's just focused it's like you're watching a play in a sense and they just let Lillard go off the chain and I just I cannot believe that it's a performance that's as unappreciated as it is it's right there between Scream and SLC Punk uh, and, and Lillard's absolute heyday and it is a performance that reminds you of both Stu and Scream and in other parts of his character in SLC Punk. It's a fucking masterclass in acting as far as I'm concerned. I don't care. You could say, oh, a 90s teen angst, whatever. Come on, man. Look, acting's acting, and he fucking crushes this role. I cannot believe that more people don't know about this. I cannot believe I didn't know about it. There are so many Matthew Lillard monologue, off-the-cuff, going wild my mom and dad are so mad at me get it up baby moments there's one moment where he's holding a rock up and, and the, there's this person like down below him and he's like hey should i smash his head in with the rock that'd be cool yeah and it's just so fucking stew going nuts it's like a stew fucking expansion pack on scream the music is just absolutely perfect for that time uh the the settings are perfect it's all man it's a blast from the past and if you're a scream fan i know what you did last summer fan if you're a fan of this sub sub genre you gotta see this movie it is absolutely required viewing there's not a lot of violence it's not a slasher but 
it's it's almost emotionally horrific in some ways. It's definitely more of a drama. It's more towards a cruel intentions type movie than a scream movie, but it's it just nails that. Which just nails it. I don't know how else to say it, guys. I for me, the curve, Dead Man's Curve, however you want to put it, my personal rating for the movie, I enjoyed it on a level of like an eight point five. As a movie, it's more like a six point five or a seven. But as a ridiculous scream and fan of this time period and fan of the nineties, it is an eight point five for me. So that's gonna be my scores an eight point five. I just thought that the twist was really cheap and sort of corny and just it it really felt like with fifteen minutes left to go in this movie. They kind of just handed it all off to somebody else. I'm like, I got a thing, man. I got Allman Brothers tickets. I got to go. And it just, the end of the movie felt like it was directed by somebody else entirely. But uh, I totally recommend The Curve. You got to fucking watch it. You got to do it. Please watch the report back to me. And also, if you want somebody to watch it with, I just filmed, I watched it a second time. Uh, in, in a week, if that tells you anything, but I watched it and I recorded a full commentary for it that is on the Patreon as we speak right now. So if you have seen it before and you want to watch it again, or you want to watch it the first time to watch with someone, it is in the link down below in our Patreon. You can check that out as well as almost a hundred other movie commentaries and good times. And you're a good fucking time. No, you're a fucking riot. I, I love your all's fucking faces. Thanks for letting me talk about movies. It's the best. It's the best. Halloween never ends, suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box, or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treat it, let's go fucking drinking. Let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS. Cause Halloween never 